وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another part of this short course on the Muslim family brought to you by Al-Madrasa al And we're now at the stage where we're talking about the problems that happen between husband and wife. And as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, people might say, well, you know, this short course about the Muslim family, why are we talking about problems? Why do we not leave it at the obligations of the husband and the wife and then move on to talk about children and parents and siblings and other relatives? In reality, we have to understand that all marriages or almost all marriages have some degree of things happen in them, some bumps in the road, especially when that marriage is gone for a little time. There are bumps in the road. There are things that happen. And we need to be aware of the best Islamic ways that we're supposed to deal with these things so that the marriage can last in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to start off by saying that Allah Azza wa Jal decreed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us the institution of marriage to be an institution that brings peace to husband and wife and it brings love, affection, mercy and forgiveness. And we've already spoken about this in the ayah in Surah Al-Rum وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمِ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ From the signs of Allah is that He has created for you from yourselves spouses that you may live together with them in tranquility. And He has made between you love, affection, or love and affection, and mercy. Indeed, in this there are many signs for a people who give thought. So Allah Azza wa Jal has made this institution of marriage to be happy, a happy time, to be a time where you find tranquility, to be a life partner that helps you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put between husband and wife love, affection, care, support for each other, mercy, forgiveness, overlooking each other's faults. And that's what we should go back to. And that's why when we start this discussion on marital issues and marital problems, we're going to go right back to the beginning. And right back at the beginning is that the marriage should be one of tranquility and peacefulness and, and peace and, and happiness and love and affection and mercy and kindness. But sometimes we don't always uh, match the high standards that we have been set and that we would wish for ourselves. And there are times when the marriage breaks down and has bumps in the road and problems that happen in the marriage. And so we need to understand the framework that Islam has given us to deal with those, uh, to deal with those problems. In this episode, I'm going to really focus on general qawaid, general things that will help you, without getting into maybe all of the details of an of what happens when a woman no longer feels she can obey her husband, or what happens when a husband no longer feels he wants to spend any time with his wife. We're gonna kind of delay those until a little bit later on. But here we're just gonna talk about general principles, general rules, and things that can help us as it relates to getting over some of the difficulties that sometimes happen in marriage. The first principle that I wanna mention, and the first uh, evidence that I want to mention is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Our Lord, grant us from our wives and our offspring or our spouses and our offspring those which will be the coolness of our eyes, the pleasure of our eyes and make us examples, imams, examples for the people of taqwa. And I brought this ayah for two reasons as it relates to hal al mashakil al-zawjiyah, getting out of marital problems. The first is ad-du'a. 
dua and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah azza wa jal to correct our spouses for us and to correct us for them because both are mentioned in the ayah رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ O oh Allah, make our spouses, make our children the pleasure of our eyes. وَجَعَلْنَا And make us examples for the people of taqwa. So it contains asking Allah to correct our families and to correct us and to make that peace and that mercy and that love and that, that, that brings that coolness to the eye, the pleasure of the eye when it exists. So it's a beautiful du'a to make, it's not the only du'a, it's a beautiful du'a to make though and it contains in it a request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring about the things which will bring about pleasure as it relates to our family and happiness to us and to make us, our us, our families, our children, our wives, our spouses to make us all examples of taqwa, examples for the people of taqwa. An imam is someone who is followed, right? Like the imam in the in the prayer is the one who is followed in the prayer, who leads the prayer. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ imama. Make us imams, make us examples, leaders who can be followed as an example for people of taqwa. And this also tells us that ultimately, if we want our marriage to be successful, it's got to be based upon taqwa. It's got to be based upon obedience to Allah and leaving disobedience to Allah. And whatever problems we have, whatever difficulties have happened to us in our marriage, have only happened to us because we failed as it relates to taqwa of Allah. And that's why it's famously said that no musibah, no calamity ever befalls a people except because of their sins. And it's never raised up except because of tawbah. So a taqwa turning to Allah, leaving disobedience to Allah, becoming more obedient to Allah, trying to be an example for the righteous people, trying to, to, to make ourselves and our families an example for others in terms of our taqwa and our coming near to Allah. This is what is going to bring about peace between the husband and wife and what's going to bring about the happy family that everybody wants to have. So it's a nice kind of uh, place to start as it relates to talking about solving uh, issues that relate to the marriage. Our next ayah, وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ أَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضِ فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ قَالَتْ مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا قَالَ نَبَّأَنِي الْعَلِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ This ayah we brought it for two reasons. Number one, the ayah talks about some of the difficulties that the Prophet ﷺ had in a situation that happened with some of his wives. And that tells us that even the household of the Prophet ﷺ, there were some difficulties. There were sometimes some things that happened. There were sometimes some challenges that happened between the Prophet ﷺ and between one or more of his wives. And so if it happened to the Prophet ﷺ, we should not be surprised that it would happen with those who are far, far less than the Prophet ﷺ in their taqwa and their fear of Allah and their nearness to Allah. So ultimately, if it happened to the Prophet ﷺ, we should not be surprised that there might be some difficulties sometimes in our marriages as well. And I also wanted to highlight the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, Arrafa ba'adahu wa a'rada an ba'd. The Prophet ﷺ recognized a part of it and he left a part of it. And this is a really important principle as it relates to the issue of how the husband should deal with uh, issues that come up in the marriage. And that is that for some of them, it's better just to let it go and to walk away. You can't pull up on every single individual issue and you can't um, you can't sort of get into every single problem. Rather there are some things that you have to turn away from, uh, you have to let them go and you have to let them pass. And that's why the Prophet and some of it he let it, he let it go, he let it pass. He let it pass. And so this is something also that we can take from this ayah as a benefit. 
some of the people of knowledge they mentioned that this mentions that the, the need of the husband to let things go and not to pull his wife up for every single thing but to focus on the things which are the most important in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal and that's what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did he said the most, the one who knows everything and the one who is the most aware of everything is the one who informed me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what matters is what is important in the sight of Allah azza wa jal. And as for some of the smaller things, then if the husband lets them go and lets them pass, then this is from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are other ayat and hadith which indicate this as well and we might come to, to some of them. Among them is the hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu anha in which she said in it مَنْ تَقَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لِنَفْسِهِ إِلَّا أَن تُنْتَهَكَ حُرْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ She said that the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he never took revenge for himself but when it was a matter that was from the haram the things that were the, the boundaries that were set by Allah that's when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took the matter uh, to hand and took it seriously and took, and, and took action based on it. Otherwise for himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his own personal uh, things, he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentaqam. He didn't take revenge or he didn't uh, you know, make it into a big thing when it was something for himself. But when it was something related to the haram, that is when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would take action. And I think this is a beautiful principle that a husband should use to monitor and manage what goes on in his house. If it's something that his wife does, and likewise it, it also applies to the wife in terms of what she gets, you know, what she, uh, what should she complain about and what should she raise as an issue and what should she make a big a, a fuss about uh, and what should she just let go. Ultimately, there are going to be things that relate to the haram. And the things that relate to the haram, those are the things that should be important. Those are the things that should be red lines. The haram should be a red line. As for the things that relate to personal issues, a person should learn to let go of the things that are personal to them and that don't involve something which is haram in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, but just involve a personal you know, issue. Um, for example, many husbands uh, pull up their wives and, and have a go at their wives for things which are personal tastes of theirs. They don't really relate to the haram. It's just personally, I like my dinner a certain way and I like my clothing put a certain way and I like... And these, wallah, it's not la yambari. It's not befitting for a husband to pull his wife upon these issues. Rather, he should leave his his serious side to that which relates to the haram primarily even if he has a right to ask his wife to respect his uh, the things that he thinks are important and, and she likewise has a right to a certain extent in that but what should really matter is when it falls into the haram that's when it should be serious and that's when it should be important and as for when it relates to personal preferences and personal issues, then as much as a person is able to overlook those, that will help to reduce the amount of marital problems and marital discord that could happen between the husband and the wife. And in this, there is a beautiful and comprehensive statement of Allah Azza wa Jal at the end of an ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, in which Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Do not forget good grace that exists among you, the, that wonderful behavior between the two of you, and that graciousness, you know, being graceful, being kind to one another. Don't forget that between you. Indeed, Allah is all seeing of what you do. And this has a couple of, of principles we can take out of it as it relates to solving issues of marital discord. Number one, don't make Islam a stick that you beat your spouse with. And that usually happens from the spouse that is more knowledgeable towards the one that is less knowledgeable, but not always. But usually it happens like that. And it, I mean, that could be either the wife could be more knowledgeable, the husband could be more knowledgeable. Don't use Islam as like a weapon to, to attack your spouse with. And someone starts saying, well, I saw in this video and you don't do this. And, and it's not sincere. 
if, if that makes sense. It's not genuine advice. It's not nasiha for the sake of Allah, where a person's saying, look, honestly, I think you know, if we could work on this, inshallah, we would have a happier marriage. It's just a matter of winning points. You know, I know a hadith, you don't, I'm going to use it against you. I can bring this, I saw it in a video, I'm going to use it against you. I memorize this hadith, I'm going to use it against you. Don't forget the grace and the graciousness that you should have towards each other. Don't use Islam insincerely like that as a way to attack each other, but make it sincere. A deen al nasiha, this religion, is sincerity towards people, sincere advice and sincerity. And that includes the husband towards the wife and the wife towards the husband. We saw a wonderful example of that with Umm Salama radiallahu anha. And we saw examples of that from the husband to the wife, the wife to the husband, from all the examples we mentioned of that beautiful nasiha and sincerity between the husband and the wife. Don't forget to be graceful and gracious um, and 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 kind and considerate to one another. And this ayah was mentioned as it relates to divorce. This ayah was it comes in the among the ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah that deal with that deal with divorce. So even in that extent, even when the situation of marital discord reaches such a level as the couple are actually on the way of of, of breaking up their marriage, still there should be that fuddle, that that graciousness between each other. And so when we're talking about the problems that exist between husband and wife, it should never get to the point where Islam is being used as a crude stick to kind of beat the other person with and just score points uh, that I'm better than you or I know more than you or whatever it might be. It's also really important, and another benefit we can mention here is the importance of being precise when describing the problems that happen between husband and wife. There are a couple of points I want to raise here. I think, first of all, uh, one of the most important things is when to discuss problems. It's never a good idea to discuss problems with one another when you are angry with each other. So the anger's gone, it's flared up, and bad words have been said, and uh, you know, people have shouted at each other, and maybe one of them stormed out the room, or whatever has happened. At that point, it's not a good time to go and see the other person and then start going through the problems in the marriage and trying to solve them. It's important to have that discussion when you're talking about problems in a marriage between husband and wife, to have that discussion with grace, to be graceful and to be gracious towards each other as it relates to uh, discussing marital problems. You know, be, uh, be gracious to each other, be kind towards each other. And to do that, you have to pick the right time to discuss these problems. You have to discuss them at the right time, in the right place, when the two of you are in the right frame of mind to discuss some of the problems in a constructive way. And that's part of what we can take from the ayah, being constructive when talking to each other about these things. Don't forget graciousness between the two of you. From the ayat that can give us principles that deal with solving marital problems, is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, "Wala uqsimu bin nafsi lawama." I swear by the soul that blames itself. Allah Azza wa Jal only swears by that which is significant in His sight, Subhanahu wa Taala. And one of the things that is significant in the sight of Allah is a soul that is lawama, that sees itself as being at fault. Now, no doubt, this first of all refers to your relationship between you and Allah that you see the sins you do, that you appreciate the fact that you ha that you are blameworthy in the sight of Allah. But it's also a very good way of approaching marital problems. Instead of blaming the other person, look at yourself. Look at what you might have done that, that didn't match the standards that you would want for yourself. And if anyone is honest from among husband and wife, and they look at themselves honestly, they will see many things in their own behavior which are blameworthy and which are deserving of being corrected. And for a person to start with those instead of starting with those of their spouse is a huge sign of iman and, and, and nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person looks at themselves first. 
ولا اقسم بالنفس اللوامه and i swear by the soul that blames itself and for a person to look at themselves and say i have got my faults and yes the person is in that situation because they're upset with their wife about something that their wife has done or the wife is upset with the husband about something that the husband has done that's why they're in that situation but for a person to have the maturity to say you know what it is i'm not innocent i have my own faults and to work on those more that is a sign of what lies a sign of ikhlas of sincerity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you realize that every one of your faults will be or could be a cause for misery yawm al qiyamah so you want to get rid of as many of them as possible and you're more worried about your own faults than you are about the faults of your spouse because you, you at the end of the day if your spouse has faults and oppresses you then that can only be a means for you to be forgiven or raised in rank yawm al qiyamah whatever it might be but it's not the case that if you have faults and it may be you the one who are giving out your good deeds and taking on other people's bad deeds on the day of resurrection so that's why it's narrated from the likes of umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu and others they said that uh, that they that they that they showed gratitude and kindness and they said may allah reward the one who brings my faults to my attention and so the first person who should bring your faults to your attention is you the first person who should really know yourself is you and and if you lie to yourself then what is there after that you know like how much worse does it have to get that a person lies to themselves and isn't honest with themselves about the faults that they have and it's easy to point the finger and say my spouse doesn't do this and my spouse doesn't do that but it's not easy to look at yourself and say i don't do this and that doesn't mean that your spouse is perfect because all of us are khata all of us make mistakes but ultimately it means that we start by correcting our mistakes and we're not the first one to point the finger at other people the more you do that the more you'll find it easier to get out of marital problems now that doesn't mean that your spouse is perfect and sometimes you'll be yeah, but my spouse is the one who you know did this and my spouse is the one who did that and that can be true but honestly when they see you correcting yourself they will want to correct themselves when they see you looking at your mistakes they will want to look at their mistakes when they see you correcting yourself and being honest with yourself they will want to do the same generally speaking it's very rare that it doesn't work like that it's very very rare that the situation happens that a person sees their spouse uh correcting themselves and then they say that oh i'm not going to do anything or i don't have to do anything see i told you it was your fault it's very rare that that happens in this very advanced stage of discord usually the case is when they see that effort from from you correcting yourself they themselves will make that effort to correct themselves as well and inshallah this is bi idni lahi ta'ala a beneficial principle as it relates to marital discord try to blame yourself first and look at yourself first and correct yourself first that will make a big difference inshallah ta'ala uh, in helping your spouse to come to the same conclusion and take the same and take the same action abi huraira radiyallahu an narrated the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said inna almar'ata khuliqat min dil' lan tastaqima laka ala tariqah he said indeed the woman was created from a rib and this rib no matter what you do it will never be straight for you lan tastaqima laka ala tariqa whatever you do that rib is not going to be is not going to be straight it's not going to be straight and therefore one of the things we can take from this hadith and we're going to come back to it later on on the topic of divorce inshallah ta'ala but one of the things we can take for this from this is you can't go about pulling your spouse especially not the husband towards his wife on every small fault because whatever you do you're not going to manage to make the bent rib straight you're not going to manage to to get rid of every small thing that you don't like rather a person should focus on what's important and there are a couple of different things you can focus on you can either focus on the things which are big wins or quick wins 
And I just mentioned this out of uh, out of uh, nasiha, out of advice, even though uh, perhaps uh, I'm not going to bring you necessarily a hadith for it. But there are a couple of things that I would advise. I think you either look at big wins or quick wins. Big wins are things that are really important to you. And usually they around about revolve around the haram and the hurumat, the, the sacred, the boundaries of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're big things, very serious. Or you focus on quick wins. And quick wins are things that might be small, but if you can get some movement on the small things, inshallah ta'ala, the big things will follow. So it might be something small that, you know, the, the husband and the wife say, look, we've got big issues between us. And we fear that we might actually end up, uh, you know, this marriage is not going well. We're not happy with each other. I say, okay, what's the problem? And the problem is something big. It's a big thing, you know, and it's a, it, it, it's huge. But there are some small things that could be done immediately that would just make the situation instantly better, just in a small way. It could be something simple like, or you know, when my husband comes in, he's got his phone in his hand. Small thing, just put your phone down when you come in. It, it, it's a quick win. It might not solve all the problems in your marriage. It might not be the big thing that is causing the marital problems, but it just makes everything so much easier. It's all, you know, my wife, when I ask her for such and such a thing, she does the opposite. It's a small thing, it's minor, but it can make a big difference. So there are two ways you can look at that. You can either look at the big things, which you have to work on, and ultimately that's where you need to be. You need to get over those big things to solve this problem of the problems that exist between the husband and the wife. Get over the big things, but also look at the small things that you can do that will instantly make things better. Because often it's those small things that lead to the bigger things. When the husband and wife sit with each other and say, "We want to, you know, we want to, um, uh, we want to get over this big marital problem that we have." and we want to solve this big, huge marital issue that we have. Often that issue looks like a mountain in the eyes of the husband and the wife. They can't imagine getting over it. They can't imagine getting out of it. But when they start talking about very small and simple things, it's like, yeah, okay, you know, maybe I can't do ABC. But what I can do is this small thing. And that small thing leads to another small thing. And that small thing leads to another small thing. And that leads to finally to get over there, to get over their problems. So definitely you can't go about correcting everything. But when you're looking at correcting something, ideally you're going to look at those big things that relate to the haram. But sometimes in order to get to a stage where you can solve those big things, it helps for the quick wins. The small things that you can do that just make the two of you feel better about each other from the beginning. And it builds a foundation upon which you can go on to solve the bigger problems that exist. And that's just minbab and nasiha from the point of advice uh, from myself to the people who might be experiencing some difficulties in their marriage. We then come to an ayah, statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَلْيَعْفُ وَلْيَصْفَحُ أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal said, forgive and overlook. Do you not wish for Allah to forgive you? Forgive and overlook. Do you not wish for Allah to forgive you? And you know the story that came along with this ayah, the ayah in Surah An-Nur, that in the story of the ifk that happened between our mother Aisha radiallahu anha when she was falsely accused of adultery radiallahu anha and it got to the point where her marriage with the Prophet it, it was it was very, it became at a stage where it could have broken apart completely. And she had gone back to her parents' house and the Prophet ﷺ was getting conflicting advice about what to do. And he was feeling conflicted ﷺ about the situation. It was a very, very serious situation indeed. And in that time, there was a Sahabi who Abu Bakr, Aisha's father, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda, he was looking after that Sahabi and his name was Mistah. And Abu Bakr was looking after him because he was a poor relative of Abu Bakr's. And Abu Bakr, he swore that I am not going to help him now again. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give him anything because, even though he was a good person, but he got himself involved in spreading this rumor. And you can see he got caught up in the crowd and he got he started spreading this rumor about Aisha, even though Abu Bakr, Aisha's father, was the one that was 
providing for him, giving him, um, giving him, you know, his his uh, financial support. And but even because of that, he was. But he he had spread that rumor about Aisha radiallahu anha, and Abu Bakr had sworn that I'm not going to give this person, I'm not going to give him any more help because of what he said about Aisha. And Allah Azza wa Jal revealed this ayah: "Waliyafu, waliyasfahu." Let them forgive, and let them overlook. Do you not wish that Allah will forgive you? Don't you wish that Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive you? And I think this is, it's profound really when you think about it, that how serious that situation was and still Abu Bakr was told to forgive him and overlook. Whatever any husband has done to his wife, whatever any wife has done to her husband, it's not going to reach what Mistah did to Abu Bakr and Aisha radiallahu anhum ajma'in. But Allah, was, Allah commanded Abu Bakr to forgive and to overlook. And that's what has to be the basis of solving these marital problems. Forgiveness, not going back and bringing the past up over and over again and overlooking people's mistakes in order that Allah would forgive you. And that, I believe, is a very important qaida, a principle as it relates to dealing with problems between husband and wife. Let them forgive. Let them overlook, let them leave the past in the past, let them look to move forward. And what did Abu Bakr say? He swore that I'm not going to stop giving him now. Since the ayah was revealed, he swore I will not stop giving him. And he continued to give him and support him financially. He didn't bring that past up again. He didn't go back to that issue and keep bringing it up again and again. And likewise, and this issue, the issues we're talking about in marital discord are way less than that. Don't bring the issues up, don't bring the past up. Solve the problem, ask forgiveness, stop doing it, make changes, and move on as a couple together. This, I believe, is a very important principle. And that's all we have time for in this episode. And Allah Azza wa knows best. Wassalatu wassalamu ala bin Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.